In this week's Photoshop design tutorial, we're going to look at a simple vintage logo design in Photoshop. This is a series one out of five. Let's get going. So hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and in this tut I'm going to teach you guys how to do a very simple vintage logo design in Photoshop. It's super simple, super easy to do. We're just going to work with one or two text layers, then also some shapes, a bit of a background, and there you go. It is really a super simple and easy tutorial. Okay, let's get right away into this. You guys can see here on the screen that I already have um, just the background open and the layers and everything is open basically on the right hand side. But I want to start completely from scratch. So let's go to file, let's go to new, and I'm going to first of all select my canvas size. So over here you can see I already got YouTube there, 1020 to 1080. Uh, I'm gonna go on the saved and I already have a preset saved here. Now, if you're completely new to this and you don't know how to do this, have a look on the channel as a tutorial where I teach you how to set up canvas sizes. For the current while, I'm gonna select the YouTube. You can also see my details down here and just copy paste if you like. I'm gonna say create and voila, we have already a canvas. And I'm gonna make it just a bit bigger. On the right hand side here, you can see the background. I'm just going to double tap on that and hit OK. So we rasterize that layer and get it away from being locked and a smart object. Now, I'm working on a Mac. If you're a Windows person, please press Control when I say Command. So for my side, now I'm going to press Command I to invert this layer so it's a black layer right away. You can also set that up, obviously, in the canvas preset if you like, but I normally keep it to white because, yeah, it depends on how I would like to do the design. Okay, that's our first layer. Then I'm gonna press F to get out of the full screen mode. Go back to the Tronics layer here that I have, my canvas, and open background so you guys can actually see what's happening. So let's drag that over. And I'm just gonna take this layer and move it right away into my canvas here. So obviously this would be from your desktop now. You would drag any JPEG on top of this and have the image set on top. If you're also looking for this image, have a look down below. In the description is a link to the media package, Tronics Design Media Package for $4.99 a month. You get everything that I have worked on in the last past three years. So you get all my shapes, brushes, uh, PSD files, anything that you get except the fonts. The fonts I cannot sell to you. You have to find that also in the description down below. You can go either to thefont.com or Squirrel, Font Squirrel. Some of these pages have these fonts that we'll work with today. Okay, so next up, you can see we have our layer here, our image. I wanna first of all take the opacity all the way down to like 36. Okay, so it's nice and dark and I can actually have my font that stands through a little bit. So let me quickly convert this again with Command I. So if you have a white background, this is the effect you will get. This is the black background. So you can actually take down the opacity even more if you like, or up if you want it to be a bit more prominent. I mostly go with like 36. Okay, great. So let's start now with the text on top of that. I'm going to go to view. I'm going to go to new guide and first of all, create a complete new guide so I can see where my center position is of my canvas size. So I'm going to stay with horizontal and go with like 50%. Okay, go back to view again, another new guide. And this time I'm just going to select vertical 50%. For those who are here every week, I think you already know about this. This is my work method, simple and easy. Okay, I've got my center, but I don't want to just continue now with new layers. I want to first start and quickly put uh, the stuff into groups. So let's select the background layer here. You can also rename it if you like. Obviously, I didn't do that. Now I'm trying to save some time here. But if you want to keep this nice and sorted, rename it. So select both with Command. I'm going to press Command G. Again, Windows users, please use Control. Then I'm going to double click and just rename this to background. Great, okay, that's my background. Then let's start with the text layer. So let's go over here to the text tool in the tool panel, and I'm just gonna make a nice big selection and going to write my first word. So the first word now will be uh, Woodstock. So let's just make it capital letters and write Woodstock. Obviously this is just some random names that are made up, so you can take whatever you like and rename your logo to whatever you like. Uh, let's go with the first font, which will be also here, mod. Serret, Mont Serret, and it's also going to be bold. Okay, 
And you guys can also find this down below in the description. I've linked everything for you guys. And like I said earlier, have a look at the font.com. You'll find most fonts there. Unfortunately, I cannot sell them to you because they are not my fonts. Great. So let's select it and just highlight it all. I'm going to go with like a font size of seven and going to the character box here also. This is a bit of my workspace layout setup. If you don't have characters, please just go to window and select the character box over here. Then let's also move this tracking to like maybe 500 or so. Yeah, so it's just spaced a bit nicer and a bit more evenly. Okay, I'm gonna accept that from the top, take the move tool and I'll just drag that a little bit over somewhere over here. Okay, that's why I have my guides for the current meanwhile so I can just move stuff and then later move it around again but I'm close to the center so to say. Okay, let's take the text tool again and make a nice big selection and this time I'm going to write here Voltanic. Okay, this is obviously anything you can write whatever you like. I just wrote Voltanic.co. Oh, co and company. Okay, select all of it again. Let's just drag it. And this time I'm going to take a new font. It's called Lily Bell. Okay, select that. And it's also going to be regular. And the tracking, I can already see the tracking needs to be a bit better. So let's move the tracking all the way down to zero. Would not like that. And I think that for the font size, I'm going to go like 40. Let's start with 40. Maybe a little bit lower, 38. And great. Going to hit enter on the keyboard and also accept that. Then just take the move tool. I'm going to move it slightly into the middle here. My cursor is left and right. I can still space this a bit, which I'll do also in a little bit more. Okay, text tool again. Make a nice selection. I'm going to write minus and just give it a since 1920 maybe. Yeah, I had that earlier before. 1920 and I'm going to select again a new font. This time I'm going to go with big noodle titling because this gives you like kind of this retro look, vintage look. It's kind of cool. Okay, let's just put a minus there at the end as well. Select everything and I'm going to go this time also with like seven again. Uh, maybe a little bit small. Let's go with like Eight, size cap eight, actually a little bit more. Let's go like 10, okay? And I also want to move my spacing a bit, the tracking here, so let's go with like a 200. Okay, that's cool. Hit enter and take the move tool and just also move that somewhere in the middle. Great, move that up a little bit if I like. Obviously we can still move this once everything is completed. Now, next up I will do is um, create a few more guidelines for me to just have a little bit of it, have it a bit easier if I work with the pen tool now. So I'm going to go to view, I'm going to go to new guide, select horizontal. You know what, actually I don't need to put a specific number in there. You can if you want to, you obviously know the middle is 50%. So if you go like 80%, you have a guideline here. I'm just going to roughly drag it down. So from the rulers here, just drag, hold and drag and drag down a guideline. So I'm going to do it roughly over here. That's going to be my first. So that's going to be where my first anchor point will be. Then I still want to determine the curve and then the second anchor point. So that means I'm going to drag down another layer, like another guideline, and just make it a bit shorter here, like so. Okay. Also, guys, if you don't have the rulers here on top, just press Command-R and the ruler will appear or literally go to View and select Ruler. Great, now I'm going to go to the pen tool. You can also press P on the keyboard. And like I said earlier, I'm not going to do another guideline and be so specific. You guys can take more time and do this a bit more specific if you like. I'm just going to put an anchor point over here and one over here and keep holding it. And I'll just drag a nice, super nice curve over here and try to also look here in the center that I touch my second line there, my second guideline. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that and press T again on the keyboard and at the top going to select it so I can literally type in the top now. Great, and I'm gonna write another name. It's gonna be South Africa, I think yeah, South African Electric or South Africa Electric, something like that. Let's go with South Africa Electric, great. Select all of it and first of all, going to change the font back to Monsterrat or Monsterrat. Mozart. Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave all of that. I'm going to go to bold and also change the font size maybe back to like seven, similar as I had here on top. So they at least look the same. And also let's have a look at the tracking. Yeah, it's still 200. Happy with that. 
Last step, I'll just go in front of it and with the cursor spacebar here, just move a bit of the spaces in. Okay, hit enter and voila, there we already have the text. Let's just double check. Here I had seven and here I also have seven. Great, so I want these fonts to be the, pretty much the same size. Now, last step, I'm gonna select all of these text layers, press command G again, put that again together in a group and just rename that to text. Like I also said earlier, you don't need to do this. I like to do group layers. Then I'm gonna go back to view and say clear guides, please. I don't wanna see all the guides anymore. They distract me a bit. I'm gonna open this again. And once I've added now my last shape to this, I think I'm gonna space it all together, space it in the right area, and then I'm happy. So let's create a new empty layer from down here. And I'm gonna go and press U on the keyboard or literally in the tool panel, go to custom shape tool. And I'm going to select one of the shapes that I've created a while ago. Again, reminding you of the Tronics Design Media Package. You can get all my stuff in there, all my shapes, all my brushes, all the backgrounds, and a ton of PSDs and tutorials that I've created in the last three years. So yeah, do have a look there. Currently, not all my shapes are in here, but there are a ton. You can see them on the website. So I'm going to select the first shape over here and just hold Shift on the keyboard. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger, like so. And yeah, another problem. I can see I've got black foreground colors. So let's just press Command Z, go step back. And I want to switch my foreground colors here to white. So hold Shift and just select that again. The reason why I did this obviously is also because my font color here is white completely. I didn't even talk about that, but all the font color is white, so it stands out. Okay, take the Move tool. I'm just going to move this a little bit down. I'm going to place it there and just put the cursors left and right. Actually trying to get that Coca-Cola feeling a little bit. Then again, you on the keyboard, but perhaps before I create a new shape, I should create a new empty layer because it will go onto the same shape layer. So let's create a new one and go back to our layers palette here. Sorry, the shape library. I'm going to select the second shape and just over here, also going to put a little bit of a swoof over it. I don't want to create a too big one like so. Hide the guidelines here. You can hide the guidelines very easy. Just hold Shift, Command, and H. Again, for the Windows users, that is Shift, Control, H. Okay, moving it a bit around. And for me, that gives a bit, a really a bit of a nicer logo here as a whole. Great, select both of these layers. Press Command, G. And I'm just going to write here Shape. And we have our shape layers together. Come on, let's just double tap it one more time. Shape, there we go. Okay, great. Now, for the final step, just gonna take South Africa and move that a bit into the center. Again, if you want, you can also use obviously guidelines one ag once again to get that middle position. I'm gonna take the Woodstock and move that slightly down. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, great, guys, that it is. Super easy, super quick tutorial on how to create this vintage logo effect. Again, have a look at Mytronics Design Media Package. It's all linked down below so you can download all of this stuff and create your own logos with my PSDs if you like. Yeah, thank you again guys for watching and I'll catch you all in the next tutorial.